Well, as promised, uh, this is the third part, I guess, of the tour of the building of St. Mary Magdalene's, and this is going to be the nooks and crannies part of the tour. So taking you some places and see some things which you might not nor normally see or uh, be aware of. So right now I'm in what we call the vestry, and this is actually a part of the very original part of the building. This was, uh, this was uh, built in 1888. And the vestry is the place where the clergy and the servers vest and prepare for services, for masses and other services. And uh, what can we show you here? Well, first of all, uh, I'll show you the place where incense is made. So here we have, uh, I guess, probably a lead surface for the lighting of the coals. And uh, we have our three thurables, uh, heavy, medium and light and a sink, and this is called a piscina. So uh, holy water, water that's been blessed, uh, goes down here, and rather than going into the sewer system, it goes right into the ground. And we actually have three piscinas in the, the uh, church, and I'll show you another one in a minute. And this is uh, where uh, a special cupboard where we keep the holy oil, the oil for baptism and for anointing the sick that is blessed by the bishop uh, every year during Holy Week. These, uh, these drawers, which were beautifully made by a former parishioner named Christopher Adler, are where vestments are kept, are laid out in the different colors and the different sets. And uh, here we have some older drawers with some other items that we use, the vestry book, where we keep track of all the services and all of the various liturgical books that we use on a day-by-day -day and week-by-week -week basis when things are normal. And here we keep the chasuble that's set up for the next mass and the vested chalice. And so it's kind of uh, when we're back to normal, uh, it's a routine that after one mass, the server sets up for the next one. So that's the vestry. And uh, I'm gonna go now uh, across the uh, sanctuary and we're gonna see what we call the sacristy. Now, St. Mary Magdalene's is really, really fortunate because uh, we have not only a vestry now, but a sacristy. We didn't, that wasn't originally the case. Uh, this part of the building, the office wing, was added in the early 1990s. If you see old pictures of the sanctuary, this door where it was here, the door frame was always here, but it uh, was blocked off and went nowhere. But there always was a plan to build on this side. So since the early 90s, the last 30 years or so, we've been lucky that we have a separate room called the sacristy. Uh, where uh, the holy hardware uh, is kept, where the altar guild, our faithful altar guild, uh, does the cleaning of the vessels and the setting up and so on. And uh, that's what happens in this room and in these wonderfully designed cupboards, which I will open, um, are all of the, the frontals and the super frontals for the altar and the funeral pole and so on. And they are on these wonderful uh, racks which roll out so that you can find what you need, you can find the right colors. You can see some red and some purple and some blue and different colors in there. So we're lucky that we uh, no longer have to have all of these functions in one room, but they're spread between the vestry and the sacristy. So I'm gonna go back to the church now and show you a really neat little thing. When the, this chancel was renovated in 1963, uh, the color was a kind of mustardy yellow. It's been changed now, it's something much lighter and those windows were opened up about 10 or 11 years ago. But uh, someone brilliantly made sure that we still have a record of what that original color was. And that's what the whole sanctuary was originally in 1963. And that has not been painted over so that we have, uh, can, can imagine that. Do not paint, 1963 paint job, there you go. Uh, some of our older parishioners of course will remember that color. Now, we're gonna go into the organ chamber where the organ pipes, which make the sound of the organ are. Originally, the organ console, or what controls the pipes, was situated right here, connected to the organ. Uh, but when Healy Willen came in 1921, he had a vision of moving uh, the organ console to the gallery, and we're gonna go there at the end of the tour. And uh, so it was moved, I think, in the early 1930s often get to see inside an organ chamber but I'm going to take you in oops very carefully and just show you all the different pipes of different sizes and there's some way way up there and there's different pipes which make different sounds that makes a big trumpet sound look at these big big pedal stops those are the low sounds there 
And we also store the candles for the fun for funerals here as well. You can see the, the wind chests that uh, where the wind is built up and then uh, goes through the pipes to make the sound. So quite the elaborate uh, machine here. Uh, our, uh, our organ, which has uh, recently had a lot of work on the nuts and bolts of it to make sure that it's in good playing condition. So gonna go now, I think down the south aisle and uh, look at uh, some nooks and crannies there. By the way, I looked up the phrase nooks and crannies. Apparently it comes from the 14th century. A nook was a kind of corner, a corner and a cranny was a kind of gap in something. So that's where the expression nooks and crannies came about. Many of you have probably seen this icon of uh, Our Lady and Jesus, but it's uh, interesting because it was uh, written, and that's what you say about icons, they're not painted, they're written, by Duchess Olga, who was the sister of the last Tsar of Russia, who ended up spending her life, uh, the end of her life, many decades in Toronto. She was a prisoner up the street at the Russian Orthodox Cathedral, and she uh, knew uh, the Willans, and she wrote this and it was a gift to Gladys Willen, wife of Healy Willen, and it now finds its place here on the North Isle. Uh, and as we go down here, we will also see uh, the Cross of Nails from Coventry Cathedral, uh, which was of course bombed during the Second World War. And these Cross of Nails are in lots of different places across the Anglican Communion. Uh, from the ruins of Coventry Cathedral presented by the Provost in 1952. As we go down uh, this aisle, didn't look at this uh, during the, uh, the statue tour, because it's not a statue, but uh, uh, the, uh, a, a, um, a mural in the, the Della Robbia style. Uh, and I'm not sure uh, the dare, how long it's been part of the parish. It used to actually be a kitty corner from here next to the St. Joseph altar where the statue of St. Joseph is. Um, but I must admit, I can't recall the history uh, of where and when this became part of our fabric. So I'm go we're going to come across now, and we are still have the Blessed Sacrament of our Lord exposed here at the West Door uh, in, uh, uh, for people to come and, and say their prayers and be reminded of, of our Lord's presence in the sacrament. And you, of course, if you are in the neighborhood, you are welcome to do that. So we're going to actually go upstairs into the gallery because that's a place where uh, normally just uh, uh, our musicians, Andrew, our director of music and members of the gallery choir go, sometimes sides people to count. And I have to say, I actually uh, remember before the stairwell was here, this was part of the addition of the 1990s, and the stairs up to the gallery were straight up, very narrow, very steep. And, uh, and this is a much more commodious way to, 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 uh, to come up. Uh, Healy Willen played his very last service here on Christmas Eve of 1967. He died uh, just a couple months later. And uh, I think the story is he was quite frail and, and unwell by that point. Somehow folks got him up the stairs for him to play the very last liturgy uh, at the organ. And the story is that as he left, he patted the consul and said, Goodbye, old dear, because that's what he called the, called the organ. I always find that a very moving story. Here in the space outside the gallery, we have the great big candles of Tenebrae. They're stored here. And uh, other, these are the outdoor processional crosses, which we would be using this Sunday for the outdoor procession for Corpus Christi, but we'll look forward to next year. So now we're in the gallery, and uh, this is obviously where the gallery choir sings the mass, and even song and benediction. And uh, actually affords a quite a wonderful view of the church, which I will just give you a little scan of. I think I'm right in saying that originally uh, these modesty boards were not here. I think I heard a story that, uh, that, that you actually, these were open, but that when there were baby gallery, or babies of gallery choir members that they needed to be closed up for safety. And, this is also to make sure that, that uh, the conductor doesn't topple backwards. You see that at the symphony as well. So I showed you where the pipes are, and this is what's called the organ console, and this is what controls the pipes, essentially. I'll just open it up. Uh, this is where Andrew makes his magic on the organ, 
And uh, it's an interesting experience because the acoustics in this space are so live and there's a distance, obviously, uh, uh, connected by electricity between the console and the pipes, uh, which, uh, which, which uh, create kind of the part of the wonderful sound and uh, warm sound and of, of, of our space. So here's the organ with three what are called manuals or keyboards and of course the pedal as well. And this is uh, the, uh, the console that, uh, that Willen played here, although it has, the organ has been added to substantially over the years with uh, a more uh, robust and varied array of different sounds. So those are some of the nooks and crannies of this space. We've seen the vestry, the sacristy, uh, the paint job, um, the gallery and the organ chamber, and uh, the icon and the cross of nails. And uh, I just will reflect again that uh, buildings are important. And I think we realize in this time that the church is still the church without the building. We are still the community without the building. Uh, but our buildings are sacramental. They are outward and visible signs of God's reality with us. And I look forward to the time, as I've said before, when these pews here are full. I look forward to seeing you. But in the meantime, let us continue to uphold the life of the world and the life of this parish in prayer. God bless.